G'day everyone, Heartswine 4 can be pretty overwhelming for new players, especially if you look online and you see all the videos and Reddit posts going on about, oh, what's a tank meta? What plane is meta right now? What's the combat with meta? Uh, Subspam, no longer meta. Is concentrated or dispersed industry better? Come on, just, just stop it. Just stop. It's complete and utter. I'm going to give you 10 tips to help you get better at Heartsvine 4 without all the bullshit. Tip number one, start small. Hoi 4 can be complex. There's a lot going on and don't let the meta slaves online make you feel bad about asking a question. There's no silly questions, only silly people. You can always come and ask Camo for help, but probably a more sustainable way to learn is by beginning with a small nation. If you try to play Germany or the Soviets without having any idea what's going on, their confusing focus trees, massive territory and huge armies are just going to send you back to scrolling on TikTok. Specifically my TikTok. Go follow me. Try picking a nation with a generic focus tree that doesn't have a lot of enemies. If you only have the base game, that's going to be pretty much any of the smaller European nations. Otherwise, I'd actually recommend a country in South America. Try out Peru if you're brand new to the game. They start off with the ability to declare war on anyone. They don't have any navy that you need to worry about. You can slowly take over all the countries around you, at least until America comes knocking. And this is just one example. Try out one of the democratic countries like Australia or Canada and just play support for the allies. They're relatively safe from any enemies actually invading them, so you can pretty much just send your army overseas to fight in Europe without much worry of your homeland. Over time, you'll learn new features and mechanics, and then you can progress onto larger and more complicated games. Tip number two, focus on your army. The army is the backbone of your nation in Hearts of Iron 4, and pretty much everything else you do is geared toward making it more and more effective. Make sure you research technologies to improve their stats, update their designs as you get more XP and equipment, and assign your strongest generals to lead them. As much as everything else in the game matters, at the end of the day, your army is what's going to win and lose you battles, and by extension, your wars. Keeping them well trained and equipped is going to help you when you're conquering. And speaking of keeping them equipped, tip number three, keep an eye on your production. It doesn't matter how many soldiers you have if they've got nothing to fight with. China starts out the game with almost 3 million manpower, the most out of any nation, but it don't amount to a hill of beans unless you're producing guns, artillery, planes, and tanks for them to use. To make guns and equipment, you need military factories and resources. To get those military factories and resources, you need civilian factories. To get more civilian factories, you need well, more civilian factories. Therefore, they're the most important building in the game. Remember to build up a bunch of them early to give yourself more industrial power later in the game when you actually need to build up those mills. Hoi4 has this beautiful circular economy where more civs leads to more mills, which leads to more equipment, which leads to more soldiers, which leads to more conquering, which then leads to more civs and more mills and so on. It's, it's beautiful, just embrace it. Tip number four, don't neglect your navy and air force. It's not just your ground units which help you win wars, it's also your air force and navy, particularly the former. Having air support will often help you push enemies out of a position that you may not have otherwise been able to take. Same thing with your navy. Some nations are particularly vulnerable to naval blockades, such as the UK or Japan. Unfortunately, those same nations usually have a pretty strong navy to go along with it, but that doesn't mean that convoy raiding can't be an effective way to sabotage their production. Don't forget to allow some of your own production towards these other armed forces, as, as well as your research. Your potential's capped if you're just relying on your army without using the support of these other branches, so if you're really struggling with them, I'll link some guides down below which might help you out. Tip number five, plan your war goals carefully. Warfare is central to the Hoi 4 experience, and while it's all good and well to go off declaring on people left and right being an angry little dictator, you need to have a plan, be smart about it, and maximize your chances of success. Some nations start out in not the best of circumstances. They might have enemies on multiple fronts or delusions of grandeur far beyond what they can achieve. Luxembourg, for example, is never going to be able to take France on its own. However, if they first take out Belgium and the Netherlands, suddenly they have a lot more industry to play with. Plan out your conquests, and if you know a particular nation is a threat, try to take them out first while they're weakest. Or if a target's protected by a stronger nation due to a guarantee or an alliance, target a different nation, build up and get a bit stronger. Keep in mind that the higher the world tension gets, the more likely a nation is to guarantee another, like the pesky United Kingdom. So those early wars are really crucial on the path to world domination. Tip number six, keep an eye on your neighbors. This pairs pretty well with the last tip. The nation closest to you, especially those on your border, are usually the biggest threat. One of the hardest lessons I learned was being betrayed by a nation that I thought wouldn't attack me. Yes, it was Russia. It's always Russia. You're not the only country in Hoi 4 trying to win, so watch the other nations around you and prepare to defend yourself or preemptively attack. Quote the words of one of my idols. The strongest defense is a swift and decisive offense. It's also a good idea to have your front lines with other nations covered, even if you're not at war with them. When you declare on someone, another nation might come to their aid, so it's usually best to have all your bases covered and station some troops along your borders, especially if you're not strong enough to take them on both at once. 
Tip number seven, research your technologies wisely. The best way to grow stronger is to have better and more advanced technology and equipment than your enemies, which you do with the use of your research slots. You don't get anything out of having them sitting idle, so make sure they're always working on something. Also, make sure you're working on what's actually gonna help you. If you're playing as a landlocked country like Switzerland or Hungary, there's no point researching aircraft carriers when you don't even have basic radios yet. Or if you're playing as a nation with only a handful of military factories, are you really going to be making super heavy tanks? No? Then stop researching them. Work on your industry or infantry equipment instead. One example I like to use is whenever I play a communist China game, I won't even touch the construction text because I only have one civilian factory at the start of the game, it's pointless. Instead, I go for any of the techs which are going to increase my production output to sort of maximize the effect I'm getting from the few factories that I do have. Tip number eight, take advantage of the National Focus Tree. Something which I think a lot of people overlook is the strength of learning a National Focus Tree. They're the special flavor which makes each country different and unique, and it gives you all kinds of bonuses from extra factories to passive buffs to your construction or research speeds, or even giving you extra research slots in some cases. You can also get war goals on other nations, which is usually a better way of going about your conquering than manually justifying, as other nations are less likely to guarantee a target nation if you get a war goal on them from your focuses. The unique focus trees are one of the more confusing aspects to Hoi 4, so after you've played a smaller nation for a bit and you're familiar with the generic tree, jump into a big nation, just pick one and play them over and over until you've learnt it pretty well. In general though, anything which is going to give you extra research slots, civilian factories or reducing your consumer goods are really good to go for, especially early in the game. Tip number 9. Yeah, 9. Tip number 9. Change the rules. If after everything I've taught you up until now, you're still struggling or you're feeling bored with the game, then just change it. You can use the custom game rules to strengthen or weaken certain nations, set them on a specific course in terms of their focuses, or even change the way the world looks from the outset to make things more interesting. You can go ahead and release all the Russian territories or make the whole Pacific one mega nation. Or if you're feeling sick of your plans being foiled by the interfering UK, you can go ahead and disable guarantees or different game rules that you might find annoying. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here and that's not all by any means. Just jump in and have a look around and try different things. You can also access cheats in the game which some people may not be about but it's kind of fun to mess around with. Just go ahead and click on the squiggly line on the side of your keyboard and you'll open up the console commands panel. And this just adds a whole new level of freedom to how you want to play. Have you ever wanted to give Bhutan all the technologies from the outset and a billion manpower? Well, you can do that now and more. Just Google a list of the console commands and you can use, you can use them and go wild. Just have fun with it. Let me know in the comments what kind of mischief you get up to. Tip number 10, learn from your mistakes. Probably the best tip out of all of them in my opinion, this isn't an easy game, so don't beat yourself up if you lose every now and then. You're gonna do a lot of losing. I was gonna say you're gonna be a loser, but you're watching my videos, so you're not, are you? Just don't be afraid to lose because you will repeatedly, as I said, and just make sure that you learn from that. Just try to figure out why you lost in that particular game. And then over time, as you make more and more mistakes, you'll find yourself improving and getting better, making less of those mistakes until eventually you'll be so good. You'll be making videos on YouTube, pretending like you're the authority. That's how I started. There's a whole lot of trial and error involved in this game, but luckily you're not alone. I have a whole beginner's guide series to help new players get into the game and maybe stop you making some of those mistakes that I had to learn the hard way. I'll link that all down below. And luckily for you, I've added in a bonus tip at the end of this video. Subscribe to me. Uh, it's free and it doesn't cost you anything and there'll be more cool videos to come. So yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you learned, if you didn't learn, if you thought this sucked. Uh, yeah, feedback's appreciated. Cheers. And while it's all good and well to go off declaring on everyone, being an angry little dictator, <laughs> being an angry little dictator, you need to have fucking hell. It's too funny. The angry little Hitler. <laughs> Hitler's very hungry.